On today's show, we are taking a closer look at the options facing homeowners. Good morning, my name is Barry Horvath and this is Moving Forward TV, your local real estate and mortgage update. And I am Dylan Gaston, thanks for joining us on today's show. Last week's show was a great show. We had attorney Steve Bartlett on. Yes, it was he did a great show. A, it was a really great show. Steve did a great job of basically laying out the options that are facing homeowners today, in particular the homeowners who are underwater. Or upside down. Or equity deficient. Or equity inverted. <laughs> or going under. <laughs> or just below sea level. People whose roof is at ground level. Or if their kids grew faster than their equity has in the last five years. We can go on and on. Needless to say, people are struggling. And Steve did a great job of laying out what their options are. And basically, they only have three options uh, yes. right now. Number one would be modify the loan or consider some of the government HARP loans. Right. The refinances that we can do yes. uh, for most people today. Yes. Uh, option number two, not the best option, foreclosure. Definitely not the best option, but if somebody is facing that, Steve can either help them through it or maybe even stall it a little bit. Or number three, they could short sell their home, which basically means they're going to sell the house for, they're going to, they're going to go back to the bank and they're going to owe, Say, right. they owe $100,000 and the house is only worth fifty thousand. Sell it for less than what it's worth. Yes. A much better option, and we're going to be taking a look at all three of these options. Okay, so we wanted to take a closer look at the three options facing people today, and to do that, we've invited Cheryl Herney with Dynamic Title to be with us today to kind of go over the short sale side of it. Thanks for being with us today, Cheryl. Thank you for having me. Cheryl's been facilitating short sales for Dynamic Title Services for quite some time now. But before we get to her, we want to talk about the first two options that we discussed earlier. Option number one is to modify your loan or to refinance it through some of the government HARP loans that you keep hearing about. Right, and we probably should note that if you are going to go the modifying route, the best option, go directly to your bank. Whoever has your loan right now, talk to them first about modifying your loan. And see if they're willing to work with you. Right. They're, they're going to ask you for mounds and mounds of paperwork right. to get this done. And you're going to be on the phone for hours and hours. I have to just warn you up front about that. It's, it's a lot of work. Well worth it if you can get the modification done, but it's a lot of work just like when you first got your house. Again, they're going to need all that information again. And then some more. And then more in, in a lot of cases. And, and, and of course, on a refinance, same thing. All that paperwork that you needed to provide, you need to pr provide that again. Just be aware of that. You know, it's a whole new loan. Whether you're modifying or whether you are refinancing into one of the government programs, it's a whole new loan in either case. So they're going to need all that information again. And then the government HARP loans, of course, they're going to let you refinance potentially if you owe $100,000 on your house today and it's only worth 50000 in today's market, they're still going to allow you to refinance it at today's great low rates. Yes, they are. So don't shy away if you're one of those uh, homeowners because I, I still have people today you know, asking me, well, I can't refinance. I can't get this you know, 4% or 3.5% interest rate because I don't have any equity in my house. It's okay. That's what these programs are designed for. And actually, so you know, basically what it is, you have a, uh, some of the loans are owned by Fannie Mae, some of the loans are owned by Freddie Mac, right. and even your government programs, your FHA and your VA. And by the way, FHA Jay just recently lowered their guidelines um, a little bit, changed them, making it a little easier for people to refinance. Even USDA is doing a streamline now as well. With that, which means without an appraisal. Streamline means without an appraisal. Correct. So there's definitely some good options out there for people. Yes, there are. Option number two, the yucky option. Ooh. Foreclosure. Uh, like we said earlier, not the best option to go, but there are some people who unfortunately are in that predicament. And, you know, if they're going to go that route, if it's already too late or something like that, first of all, we of course have Steve who can help them, you know, and possibly avoid that. But it is uh, something that's facing a lot of people. Bad stuff with, with the foreclosure. Oh, absolutely. Foreclosure is definitely should be your last option. Last resort. Because of just for the credit impact alone. Uh, the, right. banks, the banks could actually come back to you at a later date, as we learned last week, and come after you in the form of a deficiency judgment. Right. And a deficiency judgment can linger literally for the rest of your life. So not only is it uh, 
credit recovery is going to take a longer time. Seven years, in most cases, once you've had a foreclosure, it's seven years. There are some programs where you can go a little bit shorter, but it's going to be a long time before you can recover after a foreclosure in addition to you know adding insult to injury plus on top of that like barry said the government can come back and, and come after you for more money later talk about insult to injury right yes and then now there that's also associated with bankruptcy absolutely once you're in that predicament bankruptcy is probably an option now sometimes it's an option to save your house out of yes. foreclosure you which, can go with a chapter 13 bankruptcy. which we learned that last week which, from our attorney right um, or if it's again too far, you might have to do a chapter seven, which kind of absolves everything. But keep in mind <laughs> something that we, we uh, come across a lot. If you do file a chapter seven that does not, and you have your, your home in that, that, that does not mean you're all set. It's still going to be a foreclosure. So a chapter seven is not going to absolve you of the mortgage. A foreclosure still has to take place. Basically that title has to get transferred out of your, mm -hmm. In Name. fact, the, the time clock starts the day that the bank transfers it into their name from your name. Right. Key thing to keep in mind on Chapter 7s. Okay, and that brings us to number three, the short sales, which is what Cheryl is here to help us with. Yeah, there's all this hype in the media about short sales actually getting closed in 30 to 60 days. Huh? I'm, Sorry. I'm, I'm, Did that I'm, come out? No. <laughs> I'm just wondering. With Cheryl, you're behind the scenes handling and facilitating this. How much truth is there to 30 to 60 days closing of a short sale? I even heard somewhere someone said 21 day approval. How much truth is oh, there to that? Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have not had the, the luxury of having the a luxury day. <laughs> of something closing short in 30 sale? to 60 days, much less 21 days of having an approval. The process doesn't even start until the whole package is submitted. Right. You know, you have everything from the beginning until the end. That's when the 30 to 60 days start counting. In the 30 to 60 days, that's for them to get us an approval. Everything in between, we're trying to get the whole package to the lenders. Right. So you've got to have all your documents in in order for the process to be smooth and, and be quicker. And probably to note that sometimes there's more than one bank involved because there's two mortgages or whatever, right? Now, what, speaking of that, what banks, what banks are, you, are you dealing with? Well, we deal with a lot of the big banks, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase, some of your smaller banks, Third Federal, Fifth Third, SunTrust, NationStar. I guess they all and Those are just them, huh? to name a few. So everybody has, every bank is working through the short sale process. Okay, can I ask this question on Moving Forward TV? Which is your favorite bank to work with? I no, would I'm have to say, <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say Wells Fargo. Their lines of communication are more open. Um, we get more calls from them and we're able to communicate better with them. Whereas Bank of I mean, they do use the system, the Equator system, as well as Bank of America, but Bank of America is just a little harder to communicate with. You have to make sure that your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed. It has so, to be perfect paper. So Bank of America might be your least favorite to work with? <laughs> you could <laughs> say that. <laughs> They're challenging. They're challenging. 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 They're challenging, okay. maybe. Um, now, speaking of that, uh, when you are starting a short sale process with someone, do you um, usually work with the realtor? Or do you work with the homeowner? Is there a preferred method? I personally would prefer to work with the seller directly, the homeowner. It just okay. makes it happen quicker. The process goes by a little quicker, a little faster. We have direct contact and there's not a middle person, I guess, to, right. to go to and then they have to go to their seller. Right. However, if the agent prefers us to go through them directly and they go to the homeowner, by all means, we will do that. Okay. So with you doing all this, work per se for them facilitating these i guess real estate agents could actually be out absolutely listing more properties while you do all that and dirty work behind the get scenes. them to do what they do best right. listing houses selling these selling them getting buyers and you know it's probably really good to note cheryl's got a very high success rate 
with her short sales and uh, facilitating them and getting them done. You know, obviously each bank is a little bit different, but time frame wise, I mean, yours are going through in a few months, right? There have been a few that have gone, I would say six months, you know, some even when, again, when the whole package is submitted and everything is, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, it goes a little smoother and we can do them three to six months. Which is fantastic for a short sale, as everyone knows. And then buyers are getting a great value on these properties that are right. inverted. It all inverted. Equity inverted. Equity deficient. <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> I like that. Underwater. He doesn't like underwater. I like that. Yeah, underwater, no. <laughs> I like roof at, at ground level. We just had though. a bad storm come through, so the underwater <laughs> thing is not flowing well right now. All right, Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl, if you could, um, if you could, like some of the stuff that you need on a package, if you could like say to somebody, okay, to have all of our, our T's crossed and our I's dotted and everything, what is something that you see come up a lot that falls short? <laughs> I would have to say the bank statements. Yes. Bank statements. When it says pages one through five, we need one through five. You know, on our side. Not of, one. Back side of two is, oh, there's nothing on the well, back side of two. One. That's okay. We need page five because it says one to five. This is Banks like will call. I, ju I was just going to say, it's just like lending. And so many times we get people who, well, there was nothing on that page, so I didn't give it to you. It says one to five. You need all five. Right. What happens when they white out the account number? Is that a problem? That's not a problem at all. Really? Really. As long as the name is yes. on. The statement, it's oh, okay. okay. As long as the names, account numbers, oh, they don't care. Wow. Okay, okay that's good. good to know. Uh, and obviously legible. Very because legible. Again, we again, Bank of America would be one of these. We have to print the names after all the signatures to make them legible. Okay. Printouts, not good. They want the actual statement. They would prefer the actual statement. However, people do have paperless statements. As, again, as long as uh, the name, the is, name on the is on the statement and all pages are submitted. And then they need a financial budget, I assume. Re correct. They have to have a financial statement okay. where all your money is going that you cannot afford to pay your mortgages any longer. Okay. And then, of course, a hardship letter. I mean, what, right. what are good examples of a hardship that you've seen? Everyone has their own hardships. It's really difficult to say, you know. Um, a lot of them, it's just a lot of unemployment. Job have loss. lost their jobs. And they're going they're, through with that, right? Yeah. Right. Some people, I, I think in the beginning when they were doing short sales, they it was only if, you know, one of the major uh, income earners passed away. Right. Or a divorce or something like that. But now, even unemployment, because that is such a big thing in this I would country. have to say that's probably the number one. Yeah. yeah. Loss of job. Loss of job. Right. So is being upside down... Loss of your, income. Is being upside down considered a hardship for some of these banks? What if people have to just relocate? That... Because they've got a job transfer and they're upside down, equity inverted. Again, that has again. to be documented <laughs> that they are being transferred. Where was you know living out of state and coming into state of Florida, it has to be documented that they are being transferred and has to be on that hardship letter. And they're being pretty reasonable about all of these reasons and things, right? Fairly understanding and is for it the most a little part, bit easier. You know, I I, I I get a feel anyway. It's getting a little bit easier. Um, I don't know that it's getting easier. I think we're getting better at doing the short sales as far as. Knowing what each bank wants, what each bank requires. There you go. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Cheryl. That was excellent information. That's Thank a big you. help. That's our show this week. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We had a lot of great information from Cheryl from Dynamic Title Services. Yes. And if you have any questions, I mean, we shared so much information. Feel free to give us a call. You know, we can answer your questions directly anytime. And it's overwhelming, a lot of what's going on in the world today. So give us a call. We have our phone numbers right here, Cheryl's link. Cheryl is part of our partner team, which is over here. Feel free. These are the people who help us get all of our loans done each and every week. We are also out on social networking, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, all that stuff. So please feel free to pass this along to anybody who you know who might be inverted equity. <laughs> Upside down. Underwater. I don't like the underwater. I keep like telling you. <laughs> Thanks so much. We are today and every day moving forward. We'll see everybody next week.
Thank you.